Hi, everyone. I'm Arlene. I'm and Joanne. My wonderful co-host, Joanne. And, and down below is Ken Elliott. Welcome all of you to Beacons of Balance. For those of you the first time coming in here, what Beacons of Balance is, it's about balance. We live in a world of duality, up, down, black, white, left, right. It's never going to go away. So what this station's all about is living in balance. We bring you wonderful guest speakers, different topics that we talk about. This is all for you to bring your life back this way. Because when you're in balance, it's wonderful. And that's where we want to be. So Hi. welcome, Mr. Ken well, Elliott. And Ken is from Colorado. And Ken- Honored I to be here. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for being with us. Ken, I see that you're a professional artist and author. And you're uh -huh. known primarily for your focus on painting nature. And Joanne and I were just admiring your most recent work that you have your latest piece in a gallery, the Sorrell Gallery, which is in Westport, Connecticut. Also, so you've written and published a book called Manifesting 123, which mm -hmm. is the topic of this conversation today. It must be this one. <laughs> You're covering your face. <laughs> Shameless. How wonderful. Shameless. In, we're, we're all about manifesting. I, right. for, I'm a firm manifester. <laughs> I love it. Well, wow. I'm excited about the introduction. I'm starting out in the bottom position. And if I do this right, uh, I'll end up with encouraging words and I can move myself up in the slot here today. Oh, okay. And everybody <laughs> needs manifesting in this world today, as you know. Uh, so, Ken. Tell us a little about your, your backstory. Like, how did you get involved in even painting and in, in with your manifesting? Well, in, in addition to manifesting, and I've certainly encountered that as many others have, there's a plan. And the plan was for me to get into the arts. And the other plan was for me to, among other things, was to get this book out, to get this information. So I um, was having a, um, a luncheon hamburger and Coke date, and a man popped up on the counter who knew my my father, and a very nice fellow, but whatever happened, he said something insulting to my 16-year-old girlfriend and said, I don't know why I said that. And I've heard that off and on before. I don't know why I said that. Sure. I know you're coming out of high school. You got a job? And I said, no. I said, why don't you work with me? I'll teach you how to frame pictures. I don't know. And I've pretty much been in the art business ever since. That was magical. And then along the way, I magically met uh, the best landscape artists in the country and the best colors in the world and stayed with them for a month, and that changed everything. So I was securely in the art business from the gallery side and from the painting side. And then um, I got into a personal jam, and I wasn't one for launching prayers. I'm from Texas. You know, we're we're about girls and barbecue and beer. We, yeah, let's <laughs> get into all that messy stuff. And uh, but I was in a jam, so I put out a prayer. I said, "You need, you need to help me right now. I'm drowning. I need, I need help right now." And in two weeks, I had the phone number of Judy Goodman, who is uh, best I can tell the most gifted person anywhere. She's I can't tell you exactly what they're doing in the East, but Judy is someone that has more gifts than I would even put out on the radio show. But let's just say she's out of body every night. She can be in your dreams. She has transported objects and stuck them in a book that I laid down for the night mm -hmm. and opened it up in that bookmark that I knew belonged to her was in my book from 2,200 miles away and on and on and, com and completely psychic. She hates that word. She yeah. sees who's with you. When you're talking with her, your guides will stand back out of respect. She didn't get the information from guides. She just gets it from all over the place. So uh, that's one with a lot of info. And uh, it was destined that we would meet again and again and again and again. And here we are this time, and I'm the uh, well, I'm the pumpkin head student. <laughs> I graduated now to uh, you know, a relatively good teacher <laughs> and artist. But uh, wow, that was uh, really something to, to learn all of that. It seems so quickly now, looking back, and it seems so right. slow at the time. Um, but I um, also came across someone, purely an accident, William Buhlman, B-U-H-L-M-A-N, who was on the Art Bell program. 
and he talked about out-of-body travel. And he said, I'm going to give you something. If you do it every day for 30 days, you'll go out of body. So I made a bet with a guy, a real a small bet with another fella, and we did this thing. We took those instructions. And I went out of body on the 29th day. I didn't stay out long, but when you go out of body, you know you're out of body. Sure. Now, we and I became very close. I did his website and had access to the 10,000 out of body stories he had from all over the world. So I was uh, semi-pro on that anyway, in terms of information. And we had a lot of sideline conversations. One of those one day, he said, you know, sometimes I go to the other side and I see my thoughts arrayed in various stages of formation. Now, I got to see his unfinished manuscripts. I got to see a lot of other people's manuscripts. I was putting people on the Art Bell program. I was promoting people on the radio. So I knew a lot of stuff. I know five things about Paris, not five million things I don't know about Paris. It was that kind of thing. I but um, I was fairly well informed about what's going on and a lot of things that aren't in the literature from a lot of different topics. And when William said that, I had no basis for that. I said, what are you talking about? And he's the only guy I knew that made a list, by the way. Guys go to the store, we don't make lists. We just remember, that's why we don't remember the things. Because <laughs> <that, you know, laughs> we don't make lists. <laughs> I'm, I'm always, I'm going to forget the vegetables every time. Forget it. I don't even go there. Right. So, um, <laughs> that Texas tradition. So, uh, I, I said, what are you talking about? He said, well, the things on my list, if I've had it, you know, look at it every day, it might be in a mirror, it might be in a billfold, it might just be sitting out. Uh, if I've been thinking about this van for maybe just uh, a week, when I go to that spot over there, I can see that van, it looks like uh, a wisp of smoke. It looks like a vapor. But you have a knowing over there, and I can look at that vapor as opposed to these other things, and I know that's the van. It's taking form. It's already, the thoughts are already reacting to that thought, and it's starting as a vapor. And after weeks, whatever it is, and there's no time schedule on these things, it eventually gets to the point where it's fairly solid. Down the road a little further, it will be when he's over there now. He's in spirit too. That thing is so solid, it's 3D, full color, and it's going to come over into the physical realm. Yeah. Now, yeah. people don't have the money for these things. They desire, they, you know, they have a, you know, a real need for this van, and it, it's going to happen anyway. I had a person who really had a terrible car, and it was demolished in a huge hailstorm we had. It, the hailstorm was so bad, it looked like people shot bullets through the windows. It just destroyed the windows. Had dozens of holes in the front and the back, and it, and it screwed up all the metal. So she got a car that was two generations younger. It was like a new car to her for an amount she could afford because of the insurance money. So she got a new car, and she wasn't even when well, she was trying to manifest something, but we always think it has to be money. Well, this time it was a hailstorm. It was the equivalent of money. I can't say that enough. Sometimes it's the equivalent of help the equivalent of happens, the equivalent of money. These things can happen if we don't put limits on them. So William told me that. I immediately hung up the phone. I called Judy, who goes out of body every night. William Buell goes out of body many times a week. And I said, is this true? She said, yeah. Well, I said, well, why didn't you tell me? She said, because you never asked me. Okay. So what did I do with that? Nothing. I played with it. It was a game. So I would just send her stuff. Don't bother to send her stuff because I was allowed to get in. You know, there's a lot of defenses there. And in my case, people try to send me things all the time. Though they do send me things, I, at this point anyway, I'm not at that adept point where I can see their gifts. But uh, nonetheless, every time I sent Judy something, she got it every time. Wow. Did that for about two years. Can I interject something? When you said, when you say you sent her a gift, are you mm -hmm. talking like a physical gift? Like if you sent her a, like a pen with an yeah. actual object. Oh, look at that. You can't see my pen, can you? Like, oh my God, I can do magic tricks on this show. Well, that's going to be something. No, I'm liking this. Yeah. <laughs> at least my hand works. Okay. Oh my. 
Gonna have to play with this later. Um, <laughs> oh my god! So yeah, I would center all nature of things. So I'll give you a couple stories. I first heard about Judy from a stranger. Well, not a stranger. From a, from a friend in another city, not a stranger at all. And uh, I've been talking with Judy a lot. She found out about it. She said, "Well, do you know who you're dealing with?" And I said, well, "No." Uh, well. Judy's a psychic. I mean, is that what you mean? She said, no, she's way more than that. She wanted the stuff that, that I touched on. And then she said, if you send her something in thought, she'll get it. And I went, what? You look kind of new to this. She said, yeah. And I thought about that. And I said, what do you do? She said, well, I'm just sitting, I'm just thinking about it, send it to her. So her birthday was coming up the next day. So I thought, well, this made appropriate time. And so uh, what am I going to do? How am I going to do this? Um, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. But I'll make it simple. So I decided I would send her a, a yellow rose and a simple silver vase. Sure. Yellow rose, vase, and I sent it off. Oh, I have to back up. I haven't told this story in a while. I called Judy and said, I'm going to do this. And she said, what are you going to do? So, well, I'm just going to think about it really hard. She said, if you send me a gift, I'm going to get it every time because it comes out of your heart. Now, that was a subtlety. And it did this. <laughs> What's the heart? They forget about it. So I called up the next morning I got up. So I started in on that rose in the vest, rose in the vest. And I'm just cramming this thing. And I don't know what I'm doing. And I'm not I'm really good at, at playing this high level concentration thing. You know, I just don't know anything. So I, I, I jammed on it crushed it, whatever, did my best for about two minutes. And I called her and I, I said this so many times, I just sent you something. Did you get the thing I said? She said, I did. Sure. Well, you have to tell me what it is. She said, did you send me a rose? Oh, and I choked. I'm choking right now. Really hit me. Yeah. Was it your intention? She used the word intention. To send me a yellow rose, and then I really choked. I mean, I've seen the psychic people on the television. What it happens to you is another ball game, right? And and I said, yeah. She said, well, that's not what I got. <laughs> and I went, oh, uh, well, you you you, uh, 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 you know. And she said, uh, look, somebody knew you were going to do this, and they wanted to get in on it. So they took that rose and embellished it and sent it on its way. And I said, what are you talking about? She says, what I'm looking at in spirit is a rose that's been dipped in gold. No, I, I had to guess that there's a yellow rose in there. She said, I had to play 1-800 psychic to guess there's a rose in there. She couldn't see it. I said, well, who could do that? We, we've taught that thought is instantaneous. That's a that's a real part of the quantum, and I don't want to get into the quantum sides if so much of it, and so much is unknown. But uh, she said, um, well, uh, some big guy grabbed it, embellished it, and sent it on its way. I said, what do you mean big guy? And let me give you a heads up. This is not the the, the trio holy roller hour here, but uh, she, she said, and J.C. did that. I said, wow. J.C., like Jesus J.C.? She said, yeah. I couldn't put my arms around that. Oh, no, 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 no. And, and I'm also thinking, oh, my God, Santa Claus really does know what you're doing. <laughs> I think, you know, I'm like a three-year-old. I just want to crawl under the carpet at that point. So that was something. That was something. So I did that other times. And on occasion, he would show up and embellish these things with these simple gifts that would just, just bring tears to your eyes because it's such a gift giver. So the second story, I've done many, I've done these things for months, maybe in a year. And um, on occasion, I might be smart. Now, I'm, I'm kidding around here. I don't want to make that sort of statement. But just to be self-appreciating, um, I don't know why I didn't think of this earlier. I'm fooling around with the key to the universe. And I'm, I'm not getting it. I don't understand what this is. I'm just noodling around. I really am. I would play with it and hang up the phone and go, ha ha, and I'd go do something else and never, no philosophy about this, didn't attach to anything. 
So I'm going to put this to the test. I've got an idea and I'm going to make this a real test. And so I called Judy up and said, you got time for me to send you something in real time? And I said, okay. I said, well, um, do you have a chair there? She said, yeah. I'm going to make something up and I'm going to put it in that chair. She said, what are you going to do? Well, I'm going to think about it really hard. I'm going to send it this way. I've been doing all the other ones. Remember the thing about the heart? Well, Forget it. Do it. Forget about it. <laughs> Forget yeah. about it. So on the fly, I had to think about this. And I'm an artist. So I have this sort of left-handed, wacky approach to things. So I'm thinking, and uh, I want something that if there's kids outside, they're not thinking of it. It's not on the not in the airwaves of that matters. And so I'm going to put a five foot tall Daffy Duck in that chair. And oh. he's got a wooden, like a, like a ruler, a flat stick and another flat stick. And it says love on it and red lipstick. So I got a Daffy Duck in a chair. Here, I'm going to put that pen in there. There we go. And uh, so I went to work on it and I just, just thought really hard about it and crammed it and crammed it and crammed it. I was exhausted. I'm really not good at this cramming thing. I'm terrible at this. But so far it's worked every time. But I, I, don't, I have no philosophy. I have no way to do this in a, in a repayable way other than just cramming the thought. So I said, okay, I'm done. What did you get? She said, are you trying to send me a cartoon character? Well, I, don't... I, said, I said, yeah. She said, well, you have these wimpy thoughts. So there's this wimpy character there in the chair, and he's got little skinny arms, little skinny legs. He's got cartoon colors on him. I like your expression there. I was doing that too. Little skinny arms, little skinny legs. He's got cartoon colors on him. So I figured it's, it, that's what it is, a cartoon character. And he's got a stick in his hand. Wow. In, in two minutes, 2,200 miles away, that Daffy Duck is taking on solid form. Now, when you first have a thought, it's a whiff of smoke. This thing's gone past that in two minutes, and it's something identifiable, but he's not fully five feet, and the sign's not all there, but we got the color and we got the shape, although it's you know on the whippy side. That shocked me, and I hung up the phone, and I went, well, huh, and I didn't do anything about it. And I kept playing that game. And I did other things that I won't even mention um, that were far more difficult, far more complicated using space and time and animate objects. And she got them. And That's one right. of those, the unused one was gifted enough they could see too. I sent an atom, uh, animate object to both of them on the same day and they both got it. And if I get on it, that thing will start walking around the house again. And by the way, I don't send animate objects because I don't know what that means. So I don't even want to touch that anymore. I'll send objects, but not so-called living th things. Oh my Lord, so, you could send somebody a puppy? <laughs> could you imagine? Uh, adolescent lion. Huh? An yeah, adolescent lion. Adolescent. No, but he actually like, acted like a puppy. No, ser I'm going to ask you serious, seriously? Really? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he was in the way of everything. He just bumped into everything. He'd walk through your sandwich. His tail would drag through your sandwich. He'd walk through it. Yeah, he was all over the place. He had no <laughs> etiquette. The other people in spirit, they don't follow you in the bedroom. They don't go to the bathroom. They don't sit on your, you know, TV dinner, <laughs> but this thing is just all over the place all the time. Kind of irritated Judy, but the other person thought it was delightful. Yeah, I know. It's that thing. Or You're doing it too. I've had, no, I've had too. things, I've, I've had the process of thinking, of writing, folding, putting it away, and it happens. But yeah. as far as you know, I'm thinking about this and having, you know, sending this to Joanne and have right. It here right in her place. Yeah. That, that is in my pea brain, it's very hard to comprehend. I mean, you're talking now you're talking about, and I'm going to interject, here we go in religious circles, Christ yeah. saying, changing the water to wine. Well, there was, yeah, there was some sort of command involved in that. Yeah. Uh, a I, level I believe, of adeptness. I, believe, I do believe that happened. And I think, yeah. There, I've always said I want to be around. I want to be able to change water to wine. I want to be capable yeah. of doing that. Well, you well, want a good wine. Water before you want a good wine. Well, yes. I, you want a good wine. Oh my god! 
Yeah. Less water. I, I want to meet that guy in the worst way. Well, okay then. <laughs> you don't want the worst way. Yeah. So I, I can't comment on people who are doing things in the physical realm. In the non-physical realm, what was happening here, and I'll jump to this one, two, three. The number one is that your thoughts are actually making things. And I demonstrated it for years with yep. myself personally. Now, there were other things that I was doing at the time and still do. You can, if, if you can build things in thought, you can send things in thought to people that are over there. And I do that a lot. A lot. Do you both know Lynn Van Praal? Lynn who? Yes. You Lynn know. Van Praal? Yes. Okay. Oh, yeah, Lynn Van Praal, the person. Oh, yes. Van Praal. Yeah. 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 Of course. Yeah. She's so, taught um, papers. Well, she died um, yeah. was it April 4th, two years ago, I think it was. She was working with Peter Marx, uh, a very gifted person who also sees the other side like Judy does with his physical eyes and ears. Perfect. And uh, Lynn showed up. We had some conversations. And I sent her something she really adores. She and her husband, she's with her husband now over there. When they dated in high school, they were crazy for Jack the Box Taco. And when she came to town, we would, I'd pick her up in the airport, we'd stop the jack and bought for tacos. That was just a ritual. And it was always a lot of fun. On her husband, and plus she, we all liked the taco. So when she appeared to Peter as a deceased person, we had a conversation. Ahead of time, I had already put, at, asked for Rose to be in her right hand and jack and bought tacos in her left hand. And I had done that a couple of days before I talked with Peter thinking she might show up, and she did. So I asked her, I sent you some things. Uh, can you tell me what they are? She said, yeah, I got the rose. But she didn't get the other thing. So we had a lot of conversation about what she's doing over there and this and that. And I said, well, I sent you a second thing. I sent you some tacos. She said, I got the tacos. I thought they were for my husband. Yeah. That's funny. So, you know, that, that goes on a lot in my world. And well, they I, get it. Now, I can't I, always check it. As but, uh, when I can't check it, they get I'm, it. I'm sorry. As you're manifesting, are you manifesting then in spirit? Are you talking you're manifesting in spirit? Or you're in spirit. In a state? In spirit. Yeah. Okay. So it's but in it spirit. Was, so in other yeah. words, if you were sending something to Joanne now, it would be, okay, Joanne tonight or whatever, We're I'm going to connect. And it would come into her thought form. While it could. She, it could. But you're not talking physically that it's going to show up physical on. manifestation no but we can do that that that's what the book's about so oh, let's get practical um on my website manifesting123.com you can go look at interviews if you see a hour or two hour interview i give it all away i'm not you don't have to buy the book i give it away it's 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 a force of nature i'm not gonna get in the way of that so to tell you how to do it and you don't have to be good at this there's no such thing as good or bad at this. If there's something you desire, you can simply imagine that thing has happened. Now, right. here's a bonus. You can imagine it's happened in your future. If there's something you do not want in your life, you don't want that unhappiness, you don't want this thing or that person or this uh, difficulty in finances, Imagine, just sit down, imagine you're in your future. We can do it in a car, but sit down. Mm -hmm. And in, in your future, that negative thing does not exist. You don't even have to name it. In my future, oh, it's amazing. All is well. I sit in the chair. I touch that chair. I'm in my future. Oh, breathing the air in my future, that's an interesting feeling. In my future, I don't have any financial concern. I don't have health concern. Da 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 da. Now you know, I don't hear well, but I got a hearing aid. All right, that took care of that, right? You know, there, there's things that can, can bring things closer, back up, perfect. So, what's happening? That starts a vapor. It starts, and I've had Judy call me before and said, uh, "This thing's going to happen tomorrow," and I said, "No, that's not going to happen." I took care of this. No, you didn't, and it's going to happen. It's not good news. So I took care of that. I said, no, you didn't, and I can't stop it. It's going to happen tomorrow. Just give me a heads up, buddy. And it happened. <clears throat> Other times, I have a business plan. 
She said, do you care about that business plan? I've been watching that thing and it's turning back to smoke. I said, it was an internet thing. We didn't know about hackers at the time. We're going to let it go. We don't know how to protect this idea. She says, going back to smoke. Let it go back. She could watch it come and go. So there's the thing. You imagine it, you're in your future, and this thing has already happened. It's already happened. You don't know how it happened. You, you, you don't know how the bills got paid. You don't care. They just get paid. You don't have, to, you don't have any concern about bills. No. There was the equivalent of money. So uh, it's really easy to get cars, by the way. They make so many cars. People manifest cars like crazy. Getting that partner is a little more difficult, a lot more moving parts. But I <laughs> nonetheless, did it. I got my. Yeah. yeah. We get back to the point. As you repeat that, that thought starts to congeal and it starts to take form. Now, if you're manifesting something like happiness, it will be a cloud and it gets more and more detailed. It has edges instead of just being a wisp. And I talked with William Bullen about that. You know, he's a great manifester. He would see this thing happen. He's the one that got me on the road to this. And yeah, he told me that those concepts are well-formed clouds and you know what they are. Otherwise, things are just a wisp. So you go into your future, you imagine it, and you repeat it just once a day. But you stay on it. I have a list. It's on my phone. It's on my, it, it's just on my phone. It's everywhere electronically. So I go through that list every day. It's the most important thing I can do every day. And uh, the number two is fear. And I can't tell people, don't worry about it. But it, it gets in the way. Right. And if you, if you want that job, you can manifest that job. And if you feel you're not capable or unworthy, you can manifest the unworthy too. You can get them both. Thoughts don't judge. Gravity doesn't judge. So it doesn't judge. Ooh, it made it disappear. I like that. Um, so thoughts just make things. That's all it does. So-called good things, so-called bad things. So uh, on the fear side, I can't tell you not to worry about it, but in your future, you can set up something where that item doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. And when it, there's couples that do this together, I call it unfair advantage. They're both manifesting exactly the same thing independently. And that's very helpful. Very helpful. So um, there are people better this, better at this than others only because some people try and some people don't. I should say some people do and some people don't. Or some people just kind of mess around with it. But, uh, you know, I've gotten away with it and, and that I don't do it. Well, I wouldn't on an everyday basis. I would do it five times a week where I get busier or this and that. But no, it's, it's, it's terribly important. It's a high priority for me. So I've seen too many results. Yeah. There's about 400 stories on the website. So that's a very entertaining spot. You can just randomly search for things and there'll be a store there for it. So that yeah. in a nutshell is that the number three is you don't need number three. We're very powerful. The number three is just just a little game on the title. Right. No, you don't need number three at all. So you think it, put it in your future, repeat it, and and send me a letter. It's going to happen. Something's <laughs> going to happen. Now, sometimes when they start manifesting the new job, they get fired from when they got because they would never leave that job. They want that security. They get fired. They get dumped. Right. And then they immediately, well, as, as soon as possible, the works that they get another job that may not be the end all job but it's the holding pattern until oh. the bedouin comes along i see right. that a lot with relationships too but something is in play you see an action taken and it may not look good but just hang in there just hang in there it's clear it, it's getting the thing to you but some of the things have to get out of the way we our fear sometimes so it's like looking at a movie basically you know just Keep repeating it's a movie. That. I call it a movie. A movie. You know, yeah, you yep. make a movie. And you're in the movie. All these different scenes. I manifest a thing like that for sure. Yeah. Uh, the other key is to say that you're grateful after every one of these yes. scenes. Yes. You in the must movie. think. I'm so grateful. People well, that goes back to the original thing. <laughs> Judy said, you're going to send me a gift and it's going to come from the heart. I'll get it every time. Right. That's what the gratitude is. Yeah. You're putting love into the thought. 
And it's it much is. more powerful. Much How do more you powerful. feel about saying and for the highest of, of all concerned? Or the highest best, of all concerned. Best and highest good, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, um, that's fine, but you might specifically have other concerns. Our lives look a bit more complicated and say, well, you just take care of it. But, you know, you can ask a, a certain type of Buddhist, what is your desire? He'll say, happiness. But we're Americans. We like, we, we like a lot of stuff. Yeah. Uh, but yes, I think that's a perfect thing to say. It literally is a perfect thing to say. So you did say, going back to, if you make a list, you're saying to repeat it and go over all the time. Now, I just want to- Once a day. Once what a day. You, see, what I did when I made a list for my now husband, for the person I was bringing into my life, I had a list- I had like four rows down of attributes, all right? I read them okay. with the uh -huh. highest, and I kept going. I folded it up, and I tucked it away, and it did happen. I pulled it out after a year being with him, and 98% of what was on there came out. Yes, was in him. yes. I love that. I love that. But, cool. I, didn't, but I didn't repeat it every time. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it worked. It worked. Yeah. Uh, I've, I've known someone who's done the same thing at 54 aspects. And and uh, only one was not right. So, pretty you know, amazing. There's power in that stuff. And again, I have friends who can see your thoughts taking form. So this truly is the key to the universe. And um, I don't have a Harvard degree. I don't have a little white suit with a lot of pens in it and, or a stethoscope and this and that. But mm -hmm. it's been proved out to me so many times, I can really speak with authority on this. And then there's all the letters that come back. And these these are very specific things. In many cases, they're doing. So um, um, I'm just going to pass it on. I got to pass it on. It took me a long time to figure out. Judy is putting up with me this huge amount of patience with this guy saying, "Did you get the thing I sent?" And finally, <laughs> went. You know, people kept telling me, "You should write a book about this." So I did, and the book wrote itself. And it was in my hands in seven weeks. Wow! wow. How long has the book been out? Um, I'd have to look, I think nine years. Okay. Wow. It's that long already. Nine years. I yeah, remember yeah. when it came out. So Joanna, is there anything else that, cause we're. I'm just, you know, it works because I've done this. You know, my son yeah. manifested a, a, an exact 72 Corvette. Uh, yeah. I just jokingly, just a couple of weeks ago, I said, I want a hotel fit for a queen. And when I got there, there was a huge wall mural of Queen Elizabeth. Wall mural. I mean, it's huge. So you have to laugh this stuff, but no, it does work. And. People forget how powerful they are. Bottom line. I'd say for the most part, people don't know how powerful it is. Yeah. And it would take a lot of convincing for me to come to that conclusion, but I'm, I was convinced over a period of years. Right. And I still am every week. I really depend on this. Yeah. Well, we're believers. <laughs> Joanne. Believers. I think we, are, we have gratitude for you coming on today. Sure. And you're, you're so welcome. What did you want to wrap up with, um, Ken? You had something you wanted to say. It's we're we gonna... have another couple of minutes it'll take. Okay, well, oh, they're okay. reading. Victor, so, I'll be editing. <laughs> all right. So, last thoughts. This is in the book. Is life not going your way? Are you overburdened with problems and personal issues? Is your relationship a mess? I will gently offer that most of the responsibility falls on you. For the most part, you've decided to be right where you are. You who brought yourself to this point of being happy or miserable. Some of life is inescapable, but everything else is a response to the choices you make. You have been empowered since birth to create. You have been creating all your life. Whatever position you're in today, it's all right. It's all right. Perhaps nobody told you what you can do. Maybe you never heard it enough or in just the right way about the great gift you have to create anything. You now have a new future beginning in one minute. You now have a way out, a method to change the arc of your life. 50 seconds now. Every minute is an opportunity to make a new future. 40 seconds now. I hope you'll be inclined to use the information in this book to better your life and go where you want to go. Be wise. You, you now have one of the keys to the kingdom. Want yourself to happiness. Be good to yourself. 
Oh, Ken, thank you. That was beautiful. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sure that'll touch their hearts. I don't think I wrote that. It just flowed out. Yeah, it's beautiful. Beautiful. That's from a higher source. Throat. I was getting I got chills through it. So that's, that's, from a higher source. that's confirmation. That's confirmation. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Ken. Thank you, oh, you're I, so well. So well. I have you back on again. And when you come to Connecticut, make sure to let me know. Yeah. And I will. I would like to thank everybody for being here today. Thank you for watching, for listening. Get out of your head, drop into your heart with everything you do. Remember right. to be the beautiful beacons of light that you are and share your light with everybody. Touch everybody else out there. It's about you and about all of us collectively. So thank you so much. Subscribe Joanne. and oh, like. To your program. I forgot. Yes, I always forget. Subscribe, if like, leave comments. And we're on other platforms also. We're on um, Facebook. We're on the social media. Okay. Oh, well, for you, for you. It's about balance. It's about balance. I was out of balance. I put it in my manifesting. In my future, I'm in balance. Yes. In my future, I have personal time. In my future, I have synchronized time. Right. Those internal things happen relatively quickly. So if you need balance or you want to maintain it, just put that in your manifesting every day. Exactly. All about the balance. About the yes, ma'am. Very good. <laughs> Thank you, Ken. Thank you, Ken. Welcome. I love you. Take care. Bye, Bye everyone. Thanks. Thank you.